Okay, guys, I had to turn the stream back on. We did an episode today uh, with a homie of mine, but as I was kind of winding down from the day and reflecting, I realized I really wanted to talk about, it was just on my mind. You know, there's a lot of movements going on today online as far as social media influences, influencers is concerned. Um, there's a lot of different kind of self-help and wellness movements going on. And one in particular that has always been catching my eye and I've been wrestling with it as I kind of meditate through this is like, there's a lot of kind of Andrew Tate figures online. And what do I mean by that? I mean, guys who have great looking physical physiques are highly intelligent, multimillionaires, egocentric, um, individuals and they're fascinating to me because they all kind of have their unique upbringing of either coming from nothing or going to prison and changing their life around and I was having a spiritual dilemma in my mind because as a believer I'm watching this material right and I agree and am inspired by a lot of the material that they put out in regards to just a male being able to take care of his family, create a legacy, you know, acquire knowledge, be proficient in skills, don't let other people give you kind of your fate, you know, take the cards that you're dealt and make something of it, you know, be the type of man you want to present to the world and to yourself. And, you know, those, these are all traits that it's like, of course you would want that, you know, as a man, I want to be able to provide, I want to be knowledgeable. I want to always be growing. I want to be physically fit. Um, I want to have good relationships. I want to have a certain level of authority when I speak and I want my yes to be my yes and my no to be my no. And um, these guys are admirable. But the one thing that they leave out all the time is the vertical transaction of what's going on. Because at the heart of what a lot of these gurus or these entrepreneur, buff, smart, alpha male kind of guys get into is at the end of the day, it's all about creating the most admirable, honorable figure in the flesh of yourself, the best version of yourself every day with no compromise and great discipline. But the sole purpose of doing that is from a place of gratitude to be, to to raise the equity, so to speak, of the human being and those around you, you know, build up your family, train other people to be just like you, um, for this sense of, uh, human decency or human virtue. It's all about horizontalness, growing this life and leaving behind a legacy that another human being can pick up and walk in. And from a a human standpoint, that is like honorable, right? Like these are people who you would want to be around. Um, People that are health conscious, people who are physically in shape, people who will fight to tooth and nail to look after you and protect you and to give you knowledge and to grow financially and all these things that you, you want conquerors around you to build you up. But when I was in college, the most important two questions on my mind that I was wrestling through, even as a believer, just reflecting on the importance and weight of these two realities is, why are we on earth and where are we going when we die? Now, for me, it's, it's a simple answer of, well, we're on this earth to bring glory to God. We're created for God's purposes and God is calling a people to himself and those that reject him will have an eternity in hell. Those who, um, who 
believe in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. And this life is on display in a mysterious, but also clear way in a lot of ways to ultimately in the end, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and God will raise up his people to be with him forever. Um, okay, cool. What happens when you die? That reality that you go to be with your heavenly father for an eternity, right? But even though it's a simple answer for me, it is a fight to walk in that daily in the reality that this life is not my home. I don't want to spend so much time in these earthly human pursuits that I lose sight of the kingdom and sharing with people that all these treasures out here, whether you have them or not, they will bring you nothing. You will be empty in the end. No matter how grateful, no matter how much you discipline or train yourself up to be, it means nothing. If you have no life, no eternal life, no matter how great this life is, spending an eternity apart from God is the worst thing you could possibly acquire. <laughs> and that's what you acquire by focusing on this world and not worshiping the Lord and not bringing glory to him and not confessing that Jesus is Lord, right? And that's such a heavy weight for somebody who doesn't believe that, right? But it's also a heavy weight for me to ponder because I walk this tightrope of like, okay, Lord, I know that I should be sharing the gospel with people. I know that I need to be repent, repenting and believing in you every single day. I know that I need to be fellowshipping with the saints and meeting together and encouraging one another towards righteousness and good deeds as the day draws near. I know these things and I fight for these things daily to, to have a relationship with the Lord that's intimate and real and not fake and not just checking boxes, but seeking him with my heart and my soul. Um, and yet, I know it's not wrong to grow in knowledge and to not just be able to provide for my family, but to be able to provide well for my family. It's not a sin to learn a new skill, try to earn more income so that you can bless your family and bless others. It's not a sin to acquire knowledge. Um, it's not a sin to seek being fit and healthy. Um, it's not wrong to acquire the ability to be able to parent well. All these virtues that these influencers are advocating for, none of them are bad. But when they're the only thing that matters and the heart's driving towards just these things apart from God and, and you're not seeking to have good health so that you can bring glory to God and you're going to use that health to then not only worship God better, but to serve other people and to ultimately share your faith with people, to share your faith to a dying world. If, if the context to which we level up in society is simply to benefit the society and ourselves, we lost. And so I don't want to be the guy that says, well, none of this is important. You know, ultimately, none of it really is important in the grand scheme of eternity. Um, we're not going to be looking to stack cash and be physically fit when we receive any our heavenly bodies. Um, there's a different equity <laughs> when we leave. We're not going to be fighting against sin. Sin will be no more. Um, but I want to be the person that has a healthy priority of what I'm pursuing above all the earthly pursuits that I could pursue. I want to apply the discipline and the honor and the gratitude more towards Christ serving God and his purposes in serving others and sharing testimony to the most important reality, which is that if those, if people are not in Christ, it is not a good outcome in the end. And I wish that weren't true, but that's the truth. That's what God has said. 
And I don't want to live as if that is not the reality because then it's a question of belief. What do I actually believe? And so I was just wrestling through that today, man, because I was like, you know, just to simplify this and we're going to close now, but you know, I want to acquire knowledge. I want to continue to build my finances. I want to build a a bigger chest and be fit. I want to be a great friend. I want to be a great parent. I want to serve in my local church. I want to be in my word every day. I want all of that. But my prayer to myself and to the Lord is, God, as I pursue those things, please dominate my heart with you at the top of that. All of these things that I'm chasing, let them be in their proper priority in my life. And ultimately, I should be asking myself, will this bring you glory? And if so, how? And help me to trust that seeking you above all things will actually bring me real joy. And if I don't conquer the goals I set out to, and something happens and God forbid I pass or something, you know, um, I was still pleasing to you. I will be with you forever. Uh, The mission was accomplished. I have eternal life in Christ. I have more in that moment than anybody who doesn't have Christ. And that's not just perspective. That's true. That's, that's not, well, it's a matter of perspective. Well, when we both, when we die, it's no longer a matter of perspective. It's reality. You will receive this. I will receive that. Those who believe in Christ will receive this, you know, life, you, death. It's like it, at that point, it's not subjective anymore. You know, while we're on this earthly existence, we can kind of act like beauty is in the eye of the beholder and the, our earthly reality is kind of what you make of it. But in the end, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Only those who are in Christ will have an eternity to live for. And those who don't have that will not. It, 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 the subjectivity goes out the window when the truth is fully realized. And so my heart hurts because once upon a time, I would have thought highly of these types of individuals. And in some ways I still do because it's honorable. It's like, well, if you're going to be hostile towards God, of course you would want to be around those people who have virtues that had they been worshiping God would have been great virtues to have. Um, and, and are not people who are blatant evil doers, you know, of course you want to be around people like that, but don't be tempted to believe that if you just live in this earthly existence and you build your body up and you leave a wealth behind a wealth of finance behind to your children and, and, and you build some great friendships and you acquire land and you're woke and you have great health. Do not be deceived into thinking you have eternal life. Do not be deceived into thinking God will somehow grant you eternal life for the contribution you've made unto the earth. What is God going to do with your money? What is God going to do with your land? What is God going to do with anything you've done in this lifetime? What could you possibly offer God? So how could we somehow believe that how hard we go for ourselves and other people is a acceptable is an acceptable gift to God apart from knowing and worshiping him it's all his stuff <laughs> he he's the creator um and we see like signs of that in the old testament like how God feels about these things and uh, the filthy rags that we try to bring to the table. I'm just venting. I, I, I really will try to unpack this biblically in a future episode in way greater depth. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that just had me thinking today, man. Like, 
and all the stuff that we do, all the stuff we try to acquire, even if it's in good names, like, you know, good virtues and things to have, like, oh, my family, my friends, my legacy, my health, all that jazz, like, what does that even mean if we don't consume ourselves with the reality of what people who don't have Christ you know, what that, what do they really need at the end of the day? And if I already have Christ, that doesn't mean I just graduate now to going back to the horizontal living. It's like, no, other people don't have that. Share it. You don't just kind of clock in and share the the gospel or your testimony and then kind of clock out and then go stacking your horizontal equity again. It's like, you know, It's an admirable people who decide to serve in their local church because they have dedicated themselves to carrying out, you know, the gospel to all ends of the earth. Um, The most important thing, to share news about Jesus Christ and to warn people about where they're heading uh, apart from knowing God. And... uh, yeah, man, it's just super admirable. And not only admirable, but most important. Doesn't mean everybody needs to be on the front lines at their church, but we all have an obligation to go out and share the good news and to let people know that everything that they're pursuing is fleeting. And we can't offer any of it to the Lord. A fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know? If you don't fear the Lord... How could you be wise in any of your pursuits, as holy as they may seem? Um, and I don't mean just fear God, glorify God, serve God, worship God, God above everything. If you don't have that, if you're not a new creation in Christ, how could you possibly please God? God's established the person he's pleased with, the person who has surrendered to Christ, who Christ has paid for. And because of what Christ has done, he now sees you the way you, you are. So how could we possibly offer anything to him without Christ? That's heavy, bro. That'll preach, man. But I hope you guys have a great night. Um, I know this isn't like, it's black and white, but there's a lot of nuance to it. You really got to think through a lot of different perspectives. Um, but yeah, man, I hope that encourages you guys. That was just on my heart tonight.